Hello BC families. I hope that everybody is well during this unprecedented time. I hope that you're home, you're safe, and um, you know, you're happy. Uh, that being said, we have transitioned to a fully remote distance learning system using Google Classroom. All students were invited to their Google Classrooms and today Mr. Campbell will be presenting some tips and tricks to make sure that this is a seamless transition from the student and parent perspective. Um, I'm asking that everyone make sure that they are registered on Pupil Path. That is how I will be communicating. I also post things on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at BSEA underscore MS763, just so that we can give you as much information as possible. Um, I'll be posting videos, so I hope to uh, see all the kids. We miss you and we hope everyone's healthy. Hi guys, it's Mr. Campbell here. Um, I just wanted to check in with you and tell you a little bit more about distance learning, uh, remote learning at BC and what we're going to be doing now starting Monday, March 23rd uh, today and the future until until we uh, get another schedule where we go back to school. Um, April 20th is the date the DOE is set. So, uh, I wanted to go over a couple of things. I'm in Meet right now, which is one of the tools that some of your teachers will be using with you. Uh, it's a video conferencing tool, and uh, I'm going to show you how some of this works by demonstrating. So I'm going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, one, show you what my screen looks like. Share. All right. So right now, you should be able to see my screen and me, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, I believe so. So right now, you should be able to see Brooklyn Science and Engineering Academy. If you go over here and I click, okay. So first off, what is remote learning or distance learning? Okay, so remote learning means is learning from a distance. Um, we're still gonna have assignments and readings and discussions. Um, assessments, but they're going to take place on different platforms. So your teacher is using a bunch of different technology, some of which they're using for the first time, some you're used to using. Uh, a lot of teachers already use Google Classroom. Um, it means that instead of um, having classes in school, you're going to be having classes online. Uh, that might be on a set schedule. Uh, we're going to suggest a schedule for you to follow, uh, but that also might be at your own time, depending on what kind of access you have. Um, so this means that when we come back to school, whenever that is, and you're going to be ready and prepared, you're not going to miss a beat. Okay, um, the whole goal here is to bridge this gap of time that we all are distancing ourselves and practicing social distancing, so that uh, we come back prepared and ready to go. So, what does this look like in BC? Well, you teachers are really hard at work. They've been hard at work to design curriculum for you and put it online. Um, adapt the curriculum we have and put it online. They are using a couple of tools. Google Classroom is going to be our main tool. Everything is through Google Classroom, so that's one of your next steps if you're not on Google Classroom and you haven't joined those classes to do so. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, People Path is still up and running. Grades will be going into People Path, and so you should see those grades populated in there. If you don't, that means you might not be on top of the work that you need to be in Google Classroom, and you should reach out to your teachers. We're also going to be using Meet, which is what we're in right now, and Zoom uh, to conference live. Not every single class that you have will be live. Uh, not every single session with the teacher will be live, uh, but we're trying to mix it up and have as much live instruction as possible, but also there's going to be videos, there's going to be presentations, things like that. Um, suggested schedule. So. In the morning, if you log into the Google Classroom that I host that you've been invited to or that you've already been in, um, you'll see a Google form posted every single day for you to submit your attendance. Okay, this is just logging in and saying that I am here today. Uh, that way we have a track of who is logged in in the morning. All right, so that's going to be in your grade wide class of 2020, 2021, 2022 at Google Classroom to submit. Uh, you can only log into that with your BC email, all right, and it does capture that, just so you know. There are suggested core content blocks throughout the day. Again, these are not uh, necessarily things that you have to follow to a T, um, but a lot of your teachers are trying to meet with students live and do live uh, webinars and instructional videos, um, and so that's the opportunity that you'll have to see them. Um, those things will all be 
pre will all be recorded as they go, and so you can log back in and see those later. That's going to be a 25 minute time period, an instructional block, and then there's going to be time built in for you to do any additional work or assignments you have right there. Um, there is an elective block right in the middle of the day. This is kind of a movement break. Um, if you're in sixth grade, you have physical education gym every single day at that time. In seventh and eighth grade, you have art on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we built in time for lunch, and then in the afternoon, there is basically 100 minutes for you to work for the school day. Um, and you can also, there's teacher's office hours at that time. So if you were really confused about something and you need to talk to a teacher, you can email them. Some of them will be setting up meets or Zooms so that you can log in and talk to them face to face. Um, but that's also independent work time. All right. Obviously, you can continue working after the school day is technically done. Uh, you should if you have work that you need to complete because you do need to stay on top of this because if you get behind, it's going to be very difficult to make up because it's, it's hard to manage this. That's why we created a suggested schedule for you. I want to show you what that looks like here. Okay. So this is on the new school website if you want to take a look at it. Um, the attendance period is in the morning. You can go to that again, submit the form. I'll show you that later and what that looks like exactly. Um, and then depending on which grade, you have a different block. And so sixth grade starts off with ELA first from 835 to 925, followed by math. Everybody's got uh, gym or art. And then social studies and science for sixth grade. Seventh grade is science, ELA, math, social studies. And eighth grade is social studies, science, ELA, math. All right, and so we've staggered this uh, for teachers that teach across different grade levels. If they want to interact with you live, that way they have that opportunity. Um, but again, this is to help keep you organized because it's going to be a lot to manage working completely online. However, we know that you are quite capable of it. We know that our students at BC have the critical thinking skills and the resources to make it happen, and you guys do it every single day. So I have a lot of faith in you. Um, we also know that you can reach out to us if you need anything, um, and we can help troubleshoot. So, again, the attendance is taken in the morning, and while you were here, this is what the attendance form looks like. And so, if you go not there, not there, right here. And so, if you go into your Google Classroom, you'll see this form. It's easy. You just click on the drop-down menu. You find your name. You find your class. Okay and then you submit it. All right, you do have to be logged into your BC email to do this, but if you're already in classroom, you're already logged in. Uh, it does timestamp this when you're doing it so that we know exactly what time you submitted. Every piece of work that you do is timestamped. Everything you do in Google Classroom is timestamped, so just be aware of this. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to do everything within that 25 minute window, okay, but please don't be doing things two weeks later because your teachers are trying to keep up with grades. And if they're putting grades in weekly, okay, you have to have everything in on time, okay, or reasonably on time. So, Google Classroom. Be sure to submit those assignments when you've completed them. Okay, doing the assignment is one thing, but if you don't turn it in, okay, then that's problematic. Uh, make sure that you are monitoring your calendar. There's a calendar that populates with due dates. Okay, do monitor that. Um, you can use that in lieu of an agenda to keep up with your work. Um, it's really easy to do because it pre-populates, so you don't have to write anything in it. Um, make sure you're logging into each of your classrooms every day. Okay, so you have a Google Classroom set up for every single class. You do need to log into those classes. If you log in in that time, okay, there might be a live instructional session happening. Uh, there might not, um, but there will be work in there for you every day. Okay, follow any additional instructions your teachers post. And then lastly, I just want to put a note in there on etiquette. Okay, there's a lot of message boards in these Google Classrooms. Some of them are turned on, some are turned off. In my classroom, it's turned off because I have the whole grade in there. Okay, but when you are commenting on posts or you're posting in there, okay, please make sure that it's appropriate for school. That's one. And also that it's focusing on topic. And hey guys, or what's up, is not an appropriate post because it floods. And the message board. All right, so you need to make sure that's on topic with whatever the teacher is posted or whatever questions posed. All right. While we're talking about etiquette, I just want to talk about video conferencing etiquette. Okay. So first off, is if there is a live scheduled meet uh, happening or Zoom happening, okay, you should be on time to that. Your teachers will 
post in Google Classroom, which will email you the instructions and the time for getting into that. Um, you do need to be on time because if you come in in the middle of it, you're going to miss something. Obviously, it's recorded, so you can go back and watch it later. Okay? But don't pop up in the middle of it unless you have to. Um, mute yourself when you are in a room. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Mute yourself when you're in a room. Um, it's very loud when everybody has their mics on. So unless you are speaking okay, to the teacher or asking a question, your microphone should be muted. Okay, so when you are in this, make sure that you are surrounded by something that's not distracting. Okay, I'm in my living room, again, remote learning. Um, but make sure that there's not a lot going on because other people are seeing your video and it can be distracting to them. Um, make sure that it, your surroundings are appropriate for school and that you look appropriate for school. You got, you don't have to wear uniforms, but if you want to, you can, if it makes you feel good. Uh, I'm wearing my BC hoodie and make sure that you're dressed appropriately for school, that you're conducting yourself appropriately for school. It is still school. It's just not in school. Um, if you have headphones, you should use those. Um, again, like I said before, chat responsibly. Okay, don't be, don't post things in the chat that are not appropriate for school. But also, don't flood the chat with things that are just not relevant or on topic. And lastly, uh, you can use signals. I know Zoom does this. You can raise a hand if you have a question. So there's a button that you can push if you have a question. That way, the teacher can acknowledge your question. Um, there's also chats in both Zoom and Meet that you can post things. But it's kind of hard to keep up with if there's a lot happening. So, next up is your parents. Parents, this was emailed out uh, last week, but uh, these are the next steps just in case you needed to be reminded, um, or if you need anything or have questions about these, please reach out to either me or Ms. D. Um, one, make sure that BC has your up-to-date phone number and email address. Uh, our amazing paraprofessionals were reaching out and calling every single family uh, at BC the last week we were there. Um, so most of you probably have already been contacted by the school. If you have been contacted by the school and you spoke to one of our staff members, then you should be verified and up to date. If you did not hear from us, okay, we may not have a correct phone number or blue card. So please email Ms. D, email myself uh, with your correct phone number and email address so that way we can verify in our form. It's really important that we are able to keep in touch with parents, um, and this is one way that we're making sure that we do that. Uh, additionally, ensure that your Google Classroom account, your child's Google Classroom account is attached to your email. So parents, uh, all of your teachers, your child's teachers will be emailing you um, or adding you to the classroom it'll be coming up as an invite, you have to accept the invitation, all right? Um, because if you don't accept it, then you don't get the information. If you do accept it, you get information about child's grades, you get information about late work, when things were submitted late. It's a really powerful tool for parents. Um, again, people path. If you don't have a pupil path account, it's really important that you are registered for that. Um, that's where all of your child's grades are, are going. Um, and so that way you can keep on top of exactly how your student is doing with this transition to remote learning. Um, if you need that pupil path information, you can email Mr. Saifula Yaya. Um, he can get that for you. Uh, there's also a Google form on our website that I'll show you in a minute where you can request that information. Uh, Remind is our text messaging service. Okay, you can sign up with Remind uh, through text, through an email, through the app. Um, I'll show you the instructions for that and where to find those. And lastly, the My Student Family Access Portal. Uh, you should have received information about this multiple times this year. We sent it out um, with report cards last. Um, this is how the DOE is contacting families. So if you uh, have an email on that, then you should be receiving emails regularly from the DOE at this time. Um, so if you're not on My Student, then you're not going to get those emails straight from the DOE. Students, your next steps. One is to log into your BC email account. Make sure you have that information. If you don't know your BC email account information, you need to contact Ms. D or myself or Mr. Eisenberg um, or use the form on the BC website uh, so that we can make sure you get that information. Most of you have logged in uh, really every single day in the last week, which is awesome. Um, log into Google Classroom. So you've been invited to join classes. A lot of teachers already had classes set up before and so you're in there. But if they didn't have one set up before, they created one last Monday. 
um, two Mondays ago. And then they invited you to join. If you don't click accept, then you're not in their class. Um, if for some reason you weren't invited to a class that, of a teacher, I'll show you where you can go find their code so you can join their class. And okay. use that suggested daily schedule to organize your day. Um, again, this is a suggestion and we know that everybody's circumstances are different. How much access you have is different. Um, but we are suggesting to use the schedule so that you can stay on top of things. It's very difficult to engage in this kind of learning without uh, putting some parameters on yourself. Um, and we haven't filled up your whole day, but we do suggest doing this so you can stay on top of the work. Uh, when I was in college, I took a math class that was primarily online and did not organize my time and I did not do very well in it. Um, so it's really important, even as an adult, that we stay organized for our time when we're doing online learning. Um, you're, the rest of it is just to make sure that you're doing what you need to do every single day. Uh, do log into my classroom for announcements. I, I'm posting, Ms. D's posting, uh, Ms. Oliveri is posting, Ms. Map is posting, uh, just different things for different grade levels that are going to be relevant to you. Um, do log into your classes every single day. Make sure that you are checking the work that they're assigning. Uh, if there's a meet scheduled, then you'll be able to see that as well. Um, do use your independent work time wisely. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to teachers in the afternoon. Uh, lastly, if you have any sort of related services, uh, those providers have reached out to parents last week um, to try and get consent for tele teletherapies. Um, that might not be up and running completely on Monday, but we are going to be trying to make sure that we are engaging people uh, in those services and continuing those services as best as we possibly can. Um, so we will reach out to schedule you time in those blocks. Um, there's a new school website, same address, okay, www.brooklync.org is the same as the end of your email, that's the domain. Some specific things to look for on there is the news section, the distance learning section, um, and the tech support section. So I want to show you briefly what that looks like. All right, so this is the new BC website, Okay, this is the first page. Uh, like always, we have our calendar on there. These calendar events, I didn't go through and delete them all um, because they're recurring events, um, and I didn't want to lose the future dates. But just know that we are suspended until at least April 20th. Um, there's some updates on the coronavirus, letters from the chancellor's office here, but then the big page is the distance learning page. Before I go to the, that page, I want to show you down here. These are all of our social media links to so parents, students. You can follow us on Twitter. You follow us on Instagram. Um, Ms. D is posting a lot of information on Instagram, so that's a great source to follow if you're on Instagram. YouTube goes to our school's BCTV YouTube page. Uh, this is the PTA's page on Facebook. And lastly, parents, this is what I talked about when I said sign up for Remind earlier. These are the text messages service. Um, so that's sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. You just text these numbers. Text that, um, sorry, that I'll say code uh, at BC 2022-2021-2020 to 81010, and then I'll sign you up for the text. Or you can also sign up with your email or the app, and you can click on this for directions on how to do that. Um, the news section, we're posting as soon as we get more information about anything from the DOE, it's going up right here. Uh, this is also stuff that Misty is posting on Instagram. Um, so like today, I posted about the remote learning letter from the Chancellor's Office and then also how to enroll in the regional enrichment centers if you're a child, is uh, if you are a first responder and you have a child. Um, yesterday, we posted about feeding sites because they really where all the schools are. Uh, our campus, 244 Richard Argery campus, is open for feeding. So anybody under the age of 18 can come for breakfast and lunch between 7.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Um, and there's additional resources down below. So, uh, distance learning. Under the distance learning page, there's a copy of that schedule. You can click on it to see it big or it's smaller right here. Uh, Google Classroom sign-up codes, and okay, they are in here. So if you have not been invited to join one of your classes and you know you should have been, you can click on this and find your class codes and, and join that way. Okay. 
Um, there's also links to Google Classroom itself and PeoplePath. Parents, you also have links to those things and the My Student Portal that I spoke about earlier. Um, I also want to point out the parents that there's some additional resources down below. It says parent resources, including a guide to Google Classrooms, how this works. Um, some more resources that as I get them from the city, from wherever they're coming from, I've been posting them here. Uh, the DOE has also provided at their home resources page a number of uh, additional work activities and packets for students to do. Um, so if you need to find more things for your child to do outside of everything that the teacher is going to be assigning. Uh, there's some additional work here. And then I've also been collecting additional resources as they've been sent out. Uh, most all of these things are free um, or are free at least for the time being. So a lot of companies are donating their products. Um, and then there's a comprehensive list that I haven't even been through that's really, really long. Uh, with a lot of different things for different ages. So if you have younger siblings and you're looking for more resources, you can also access this list. Um, this one's cool too. It's a list of all the different things that are being live streamed every day for different ages. Um, one thing I wanted to point out right here was that the Brooklyn Public Library, because they are closed right now, um, they have an e-card application right now. So if you are a Brooklyn resident, you can get a BPL library card online, and then you have access to all of their resources through the Brooklyn Public Library, including e-books. So even though you can't go to the library physically, you can still check out books. And if you don't have a library card already, this is way, one way to get one. Um, other things that are on the website. There's also some information about COVID from the DOE down at the bottom. All that can be found at the Info Hub. Uh, that's the DOE's website as well. Lastly, tech support. <clears throat> so there's been a number of questions and different types of questions about tech um, and the equipment that we gave out. Um, we've been trying to field those questions as we go. The best way to do that is through this website, honestly, uh, so I can make sure that one of our team gets back to it. Um, if you are having issues with the Chromebooks, there's a video that I made. Uh, if this doesn't solve your problem, please do submit the question down here in the form that I'll talk about in a second. Um, some of the computers require admin passwords to change the Wi-Fi networks. That is here. All right. So you can use that password to change the network. Um, the DOE had a form to fill out by March 20th. I left the information up there in case you still need to contact them. Uh, you can still contact them and see if you can get an additional device. Um, and then this is Mr. Eisenberg's email address and Mr. Saifla's email address and school phone number for Mr. Saifla. Um, if you need any tech issues, you can contact them or you can use this form. Uh, Mr. Eisenberg are taking, and I are checking this form throughout the, the day. Um, and this if you're having issues with getting onto the internet with the school issued computers, the BC email, Google Classroom, People Path, Parent Portal, Remind, or anything else, uh, if we can help you out, we will. All right. Um, so I think that's about it for me tonight. That is. Uh, I covered everything I wanted to cover. I hope you have a great evening, and we're going to be really great at remote learning. Um, Keep in mind that we are learning how to do this together, and this is a big shift for not only our school, but for the school system. So as we learn more about it, we're going to be making tweaks as we go. Uh, and we appreciate your support and your flexibility as we work together to continue to provide the best education that we can. All right, have a good night, or good morning, or good day.